you know, batteries are charging away there. In fairness, that's only two. I've well, another seven in my bag. I have like nine batteries now. Um, going out for an astro shoot tonight. I'll just give you a quick look. Okay, this is my R6 camera, 16, 35, 14 mil lens here, and a 7200 here, and I have the star tracker. I have a Canon 6D here, and I have another Canon 6D Astro modified here. But what I want to do with this one, I'm just going to show you this filter here. This is an astronomic 12 nanometer filter. So it picks up all the reds in space, even more so than the Astro Mod camera. I'm talking like extreme stuff that you cannot see with naked eye. So if I have time, I don't know how much time how much time, how much clear skies we'll have, depends on clouds and stuff. If I have time though, I'm going to try to shoot with this. The problem is, at 12 nanometers, the human eye can't see that. So I can't see anything on the back of my camera when I put this in, so trying to focus is nearly impossible. But if I can get it and blend it with the normal shots and the, the Astro Mod and get them all together, it could be beautiful. So if you can see the back of my camera here, I just need to have a so I'm just picking it up, sorry. Uh, go through the menu. Ah, it's actually the second one. You see mirror lock up at the end. I press that. Switch it on. You should hear the mirror locking up. No, oh, you didn't even hear it. Hang on. Maybe I have to press it. There we go. Now, my mirror is locked up. So I can now delicately place this filter in. Because it has to be perfect. Just kind of slots in on either side, see that? And my camera lens just goes back in on top of that. And this is gonna allow me to shoot in 12 nanometer light. I tend to do, because I've been out with this before and I've gotten some unbelievable stuff that I didn't even know was in the sky and it showed up was great because this will show up all completely red. So you convert it to black and white and you'd normally take a color image and you put the color image over that and it will enhance the white that you wouldn't normally see in a normal shot. But because my stars are so well focused because I can't see and I'm twisting this way and that way and I can never get it right. So I found a program that allows me to take the stars out of the shots. So if I can get it nearly in focus and I can just take the stars out and then I'll put my light frame on top of that which is the normal shot or the astro mod shot and I'll leave the stars in and hopefully it'll give me some more detail. I'm not exactly sure what I'm shooting. This is the last week we can kind of see the Milky Way and then it's gone until next February, March kind of before it's back again. But at the same time, there's a lot of deep space stuff out there. We are coming into deep sky shooting season. Um, I'm possibly going to go for the Cygnus region. I can't wait to shoot at Ryan's. a bit early for Ryan because it's coming up very late. And I think the moon is up around 2 o'clock. But so look, we'll find out when we get there. We have a two or three hour drive depending on where we're going. But the south coast or southeast coast uh, is looking good. So we were thinking about Hookhead. And now we're thinking possibly Waterford. There is there's a sea stack in Waterford that I have been looking to get the Milky Way over the last couple of times I was there. It just didn't line up. I think it lines up tonight. And like I said, the moon's off till two o'clock. It's a long drive, but hopefully it's going to be worth it. Two hours and seven minutes down to the south coast. Quick fuel stop. A few munchies. So we just had a quick pit stop for a bit of fuel there and pick up a few munchies. We kind of have a tradition, if we stop at a shop on the way down and they have star bars, it's going to be a good night. And if they don't, it'll probably still be a good night, but there's a chance it won't be. It's kind of just a tradition that we started picking them up and it was always clear skies, so... They had star bars. It's going to be a good night. About an hour away. the door in the dark sky and just look out oh my god yes there is maybe they're taking pictures as well there's people down the beach you can't see a thing on this camera i know sorry but i can see let me jump back in there for a sec just the lights of the car i can see the milky way above my head that's how clear it is here as soon as i step out of the car no waiting for me or is the dark just or anything unreal and it looks like the Milky Way is roughly in the spot where I need it to be. <laughs> Can't wait. Bit of a heavy bag because I have a few cameras and 
a lot of lenses, but wow, this was worth a drive. So I've parked up the car about a maybe five to ten minute walk uphill. At least it'd be downhill coming back. But there's a big sea stack on the beach down here called Tranabow. Now I'm hoping the Milky Way lines up with it. But before I actually go down to the beach, you can kind of get on top of the cliffs if you go up these few steps and around the side. And I've been here before. And it's like a small little pond on top. And if there's no grass in it, you can get the reflection of the stars, which would be unreal. Because last time I was here, the Milky Way didn't line up. Wow, I'm so on a hell breath already. But um, the sky's just so beautiful here. I'm so glad I came. It was worth a just over two hour drive. And we've got about four or five hours before the moon comes up. So I'm after this shot with the pond, the shot with the sea stack. And if possible, I know there's a cave down on this beach, but that depends on the tide. But that's gone to camera. I can't see in the dark. Let me show my torch there for a minute so I don't go over because that is the sea down there. There's a little town down there whose name I cannot remember. But if you can see all them lights on the beach, it's all fishermen. I don't know if there's something special going on tonight. Uh, there's a lot of fishermen out night fishing, but I really wish you could see this guy. So it's a little bit of a trek down to the beach here. And this is the big sea stack. Now, I see somebody down here with a camera, so there's somebody already here. And he also left his camera up there. In fairness, I do that all the time as well. Walk off and leave a camera there. And another photographer's never gone to touch anyway, so I'm sure your man can see where photographer's walking down. So, he's obviously got the same idea I had, shooting right at the sea stack there. Yep. yep. It's a bit slippy there. Yeah. The last steps. And we are here. So I'm at this Tronabow beach. That's the big sea stack there I was talking about. So this lines up perfectly with the Milky Way. But I'm just doing a test I shot here. The beach is right there. It's a bit of a windy night, but it's nice and calm here. There's a cave over there I want to try out later. But my first shot is just finished here. Let's have a look. Uh, maybe a bit too bright on this camera, is it? That is not bad for the first test shot with the Aston Mods. Happy with that? You little beauty. Now I'm gonna go over and I'm gonna line up with that sea stack. Wow, I'm really pleased with that force test I shot. So I'm just setting up my short release here to take 10 exposures. Actually, I'm just, I'm gonna tuck it in. I have a, a bit of tape here on my tripod leg because I'm on the beach and I'm afraid of leaving it in the sand. Sorry, one second, I know I'm out of focus. And just, okay, and I'm just gonna, one second, press, go. Click, there we go. That's gonna take 10 two minute exposure, so I've got 20 minutes and I'm just gonna stack them all on top of each other. So while my camera is shooting away there, taking that uh, 10 two minute exposures, I'm going to go look for this cave that I was looking for. I know it's down the beach and this light is not very strong, so I'm just gonna have to keep walking and see. The tide doesn't seem to be in too far, but I know if I can get a shot from inside this cave with the Milky Way lined up, we'll be unreal. Oh, a bit of a drop off there. I should really turn the torch around. Use a big drop off. <laughs> Sorry, flipping these around. Uh, there's not much point in flipping these around because you can't actually see anything. So I'm going to keep walking. So I've seen one there. of my last videos where I was, I was complaining about the 6D because it had this horrible light leak in it. And I said it turned out it was because it was on live view. And I took my first test I shot there and I was delighted. And then I set it up to take another 10 shots. So 20 minutes went by and I came back to realise, didn't I leave it on live view? So I've just ruined all those shots. So I'm starting again, but I'm dropping my exposure down to 90 seconds before the Milky Way moves over too far. And I'm just going to do five shots and I'm going to stack them. Then I'm going to tilt it up and do another five and stack them. Try and pick up the Cygnus region as well beside this sea stack. I found my cave over there and I'm going to go over there in a while after I get these shots. <sighs> Stupid mistakes, but... These things happen. It's such a beautiful night here though. So 
So this is what I drove over two hours from Dublin for. See this sea stack? I've always wanted to get this with the Milky Way and at the minute it is right here behind it. We can see stars all the way to the horizon. I am in my element. I'm shooting with the Astro Mod, which I couldn't get to work before. Figured out where the light leak was coming from and now it's unbelievable. I'm doing panoramics, one minute exposure, sorry, 90 second exposures. I'm doing five, maybe 10 some and then I'm tilting the camera up and getting more, tilted up again, getting more. All the way up to the Cygnus region, the reds are just popping. It is insane, I love it. How's it going tonight? What do you think? Well, it's excellent. As you were saying, Anthony, we're down here and it's crystal clear. The weather was really rainy all day. So when it rains really heavily and there's clear skies forecast in the evening, it's perfect for conditions to go and try and get uh, the Milky Way. That's because the air clarity is super fine because all the, the rain pulls down all the dust in the middle areas of the atmosphere. So it makes conditions absolutely crystal clear. So we're here tonight on the beach. Run us through your set up there. Yeah. So we're here tonight on the beach set up. You have to be careful about your tripod, making sure it's all uh, balanced well. Uh, double check everything with the sand not being too loose uh, to move the tripod around. But overall, it's looking well here. Tripod, I have the Ioptron Skyguider Pro and the Nikon D750. Uh, I'm working on a track shot of a panoramic, a 50mm lens. Um, what I'm doing here is I'm doing four or five sequences uh, per shot. ISO 1600, f2.8 and um, 90 seconds. So the plan is to take four shots each, stack them all together, turn that all into a big panel and get super fine detail at 50 mil. So that's my plan so far. But we all learn some mistakes each day, each night as we go along. What so far, have you made tonight? So far I made one mistake of uh, in between one of set of panels of eight minutes that was wasted because I had my ISO set too high for my earlier test shot to try and make sure it's aligned properly. So uh, yeah, I quickly changed that. Gladly I, I noticed it in time before I ruined the extra half an hour that we're doing. I'm also doing some nice phone shots. Um, I don't know if you've had to get it up on your, your camera there. Just trying out some, uh, the Google Pixel 4 <coughs> has a uh, astro photo mode. So there's a C stack. That's a single four minute shot with the the Google Pixel, just about maybe, let's yes. see, it. you know, so just messing around with that and turns it into a nice little video, so just some different compositions I can do with the phone, I might actually get down with the main camera as well later this evening when we're finished with the main, the main shot, so that's what I'm doing and yeah, hopefully we get some good results. Hello, so I'm down with Anto and Ian this evening, shooting the Milky Way and uh, has, hasn't been, I haven't been out in a long time. Uh, due to work and everything, so I'm back out again. Delighted to be back out under the stars and seeing the Milky Way. Um, I'm shooting this evening with my Canon and a Sigma lens uh, to capture the, the widest angle I can, plus a tracker and a um, very, very, very good uh, tripod. But um, so far, it's going really, really well. Um, I'll show you guys what it looks like on the back of the camera. Um, from my angle. Just try and knock it off face track there for a second. Um, so that's what I'm looking at here now at the minute. Is it? Just tilt it down a bit there and I'll just see if I can see it. I can never tell if this is on focus. Um, see it so that's what the Milky Way is looking at. Beautiful. Right there now at the minute. Um, so pretty happy with the two hour drive that I made. There's an L plane going through it. but I'm pretty happy and the guys are pretty happy so yeah. It's a win-win on -win so Friday. So I went back and I got a big old light off Jay there to come back and get my cave shot. So it's just over here, I'm going to show you some sights. I've been here once before and there was a rock in the foreground and I got my Mrs Joanne to stand on the rock and this was during the daytime now. There's the tides coming in very close to us there, but that's okay. Um, the thing that's special about this cave is actually, it looks like this is the end of the beach, like this cliffs, but when you go in here, you might be able to see, I don't know if it's bright enough, but there's a little hole up there and there's a rope. And if you climb up there and go through that hole, you come out the other side and there's another beach and there's another cave down there. Now, just trying to remember. Yeah, so 
don't know if you can see, but there's a crack going up there. With, can you see that? The hole up there? In the middle, that's where you go through. But this is where I set my shot up before. Yeah. So there's normally a rope there and you can climb up and go through. Like it's not much of a climb and go out the other side. But there's a secret beach out there, as I said in, but if you can go into the cave, the problem is yeah, you're gonna have to walk into the sea up to your knees, which is what I did last time. And you have wet feet then for the rest of the day. And I just pick up that light, so oh wow, I'm falling all over the place, yeah. Let's see if I can pick you up there in. Yeah, and if you just squeeze through there, you can come out the other side. Just make sure the tide is not in around there then. You staying up there? Yes. stuff so guys i found my cave i'm sitting in the back and as soon as i turned the light off a bat is flying around my head i nearly shit myself but, uh, yeah crazy i'm gonna just take another exposure i'm just gonna get in to light up the cave for one second right so when i say knock it off right okay let's just see what this looks like um the stars are just popping right outside it's unbelievable ah oh, shit i moved the camera Sorry. Mm -hmm. So if you can see, I'm in this cave as far back as I can go. I have my camera really low here, so I can pick up this cave system with the stars outside. And I've just moved around to the other side because there's kind of a couple of sides to this cave. And I think, I don't know if this will show up, but I think with a 14 mil, this is going to be a much better composition. If I can pick all that up, going up all out that way. So let's see how this looks. Right, so I have me few shots from inside the cave. Walking back out, and just to give you an idea, like the tide is coming right in on us now. So I think it's time to get out of here before I get trapped in here. But uh, anyone like leeches? <laughs> this whole cave is covered in them. Oh man, I just realised I've been sitting in there. <laughs> They're probably all over me. I hope not. So Look, let's get out of here. this is shown on camera, but Ian is after walking up there so I can get, I can get a silhouette shot of him. That's him with the light. So I'm hoping he can stand on the edge if it's not too dangerous. And I'm going to take 15 second shots, about 10 of them and stack them. What's it like up there? Is that why you're stopping? Is that why you're stopping? Is that where you're stopping? Hang on, he's gonna ring us on the phone, it'd be easier. Yeah. Yo. What's it like up there? Dodgy. Right. Are you on the edge? Because I can't see. It's just black with light. I can't see it till I do a test shot. I can't, I can't relax. Uh, it's probably hard with the ball. Right. Ah, look, if it's too dodgy, just leave it. Like, do you think I need to be over there? 
Uh, it would be nice over there, but like that one will do as long as I can see it. Right, so I'll point the, the shot up. Uh, right. Um, what if I do... Wait, wait, stay there, stay there. <laughs> this is going to be an insane shot of a walks. See, even though he looks like he's on the edge, it might not be the edge to us, yeah. you know. Yeah, it won't be because yeah. the stone's set you for you. Looks like he's in my pocket there. See the corner there. Oh yeah, it looks like a face when you shine the light on it. Yeah. If I do a quick one there, and I just even can see you see me in the light. Okay. So with all the rushing around, I was doing, trying to get that cave and the sea stack and everything else and Ian up on the cliffs there. I didn't have a chance to try out that HA filter I was talking about earlier, the 12 nanometer. So I'm after sticking it in there. But like I said, focus is impossible. I'm trying 20 second shots of high ISO just to see if I can get it in focus. And I can't. So I have it reasonably close, I think, from what I can see. I don't have my glass on. So I'm doing a six minute exposure and I'm just going to see what it looks like. And if it looks good, I'm going to do a pan out of the Cygnus region because the Milky Way has kind of moved over too much now that it's going into the light pollution over there at the end of it. So, okay, this shot is just finished. So let me just uh, call that back up there. And let me see if you can see that on the screen. Now, don't mind, it's red like it's supposed to be that. You change it to black and white. But, okay, I need to zoom in that and have a proper look. I think the star bar has done its job and it's time to eat it now because I'm getting hungry. So I think it's time for the cup of tea. I always bring the flask because it's cold night, a hot cup of tea will warm you up. In fairness, it's not that cold tonight. We're fairly sheltered down here, but from what I can see on the back of the camera, I'm really pleased with the Astro Mod that I was giving out about in previous videos. It's actually looking really good. So if anyone has that light leak issue, it's just because you have your live view on. Once you turn the live view off, you're laughing. So uh, Jay has left us there. He's gone home because he's in work tomorrow. So it's just myself and Ian. We came down in the same car, so we'd be going at the same time. But um, I'm still sh shooting away with that filter I was talking about. And I'm taking six minute exposure. So I was hoping to get a big panoramic with them, but the problem is, because the Milky Way has moved over so much now, that I'm actually in the panel because I'm straight up, I'm picking up the tops of the cliffs there, which obviously I'm not going to be able to assist them to get out of that. So I've decided just to do a few shots going straight down. set up for some foregrounds. So I'll finish down on the beach now. Got some nice shots of Ian sitting up on the rock there. But we're gonna head up top and see what we can see before the moon comes up and get another few shots in. So I definitely thinking this was a successful night. The images on the back of the camera look amazing but you never really know till you see them on a computer. So, we just have to wait and see. So guys, I'm getting excited here. I can see Orion, almost a whole lot of it. Sorry, I need to turn towards the sex so we can see. Um, I didn't think I was gonna get to see Orion tonight before the mule came up. Ooh. Oh, thorny bushes I nearly fell into. Yeah, that's some odd on Orion. I might even, if it gets high enough, I'm gonna run back down to that cave because it lines up perfectly, but I can't wait for this. So I've just come up to the top of the cliff and I've seen Orion. Thing is, the moon is up in 15 minutes, so I'm going as quick as I can, trying to get a test shot again with the Astro Mod. I'm going wide at 16 mil, one minute exposure, 1600 ISO because it's low on the horizon. 
I'm hoping I can pick up the Taurus region and the Haiti Star Cluster, and the Pallades is above that, and then the California Nebula is above that, and all those reds will show up. I'm not sure if I'll get them all at this angle, but I've, like, we're probably down to about 10 minutes now before the moon comes up, but I'm going to do my best to get it. I'm excited. I've been waiting all year for to try this Astro Mod on Orion. I can't wait. Five seconds to go, the one minute show. Three, two, one. It should come on here. And let me just open this up. I don't know how much of that is showing on this. But there's the whole Orion region here. Taurus, Pleiades and California. Sweet. I'm just moving over here away from the camera. So yeah, I took the Tesla shot there. I'm getting the Orion Nebula, the Haiti Star Cluster in Taurus, the Pallades Star System, my M45, and the California Nebula above it. Um, the moon's up soon, but I've set it to take 15 one minute shots. I doubt I'll get them all before the moon comes up, but hopefully I get something and stack them. I'm excited to see this. I'm at the Barnard's loop as well, but to be honest, I'm not sure it's high enough above the horizon to get that, that big red loop that you see coming around. But there's only one way to find out. I can't wait to see these shots on the computer. Ian sitting in front of the moon for a shot there. It looks pretty cool, actually. The moon over the sea now. But it's time for me to call it and I make our way back to the car. And two hours something drive back to Dublin. But man, I think we got some great shots and I'm really happy we came down here. So, I'll show you this tomorrow now. Until next time. Mm -hmm.